Alright guys, this is uh, Driven by Christ Auto. This is going to be episode 10. So I know that was a really long lunch break that I went on from the time earlier. We are, we are going to continue the rest of the day. It's just going to be nothing but working on the drag car, but prayers come through. During my lunch break, I had to make a run to the hospital in real life and go pick up my wife they released her from the hospital found out it was not a blockage it was just the smaller veins around her heart are restricted and it's causing her to have chest pain so she's on after they did the uh, catheter and the cat scan she's on bed rest for a few days so she's going to be in the background running her mouth uh, y'all gonna probably end up hearing her um, or either getting sick in a bucket, which I may have to get up and help her, but, you know, that's just part of it. Whenever you get your wife, you'll understand. Um, but, uh, anyways, uh, so she's back at home, so prayers come through, guys. They work. Prayers and numbers are more powerful than a single prayer by yourself. Always remember that. It's good to have a, a praying community or what they call prayer warriors. You know, they're willing to pray at any point in time for any situation. I am one of them. All you got to do is just let me know. But uh, anyway, so she's in the back. She's laid down in the bed. Um, and we're, we're going to continue our uh, drag car. So uh, we know we got the. It's just an engine and body work and frame. That's all we got. So we got to do the suspension. And, you know, put in the rear end, the drive shaft, the transmission. So, let's go ahead and get this thing up in the air. And we're going to order. Uh, we're going to actually get a performance clutch kit. Uh, let's go ahead and go hit up our rallies again. Uh, we're going to clear this list because that's from another car. Uh, uh, but before we do that, sorry. Um, let's check our parts. And we got a blessings box. So the previous uh, car that we worked on, they sent us a little gift back in the mail um, or left us a gift here uh, while we were gone at lunch. So let's open it up and see what we got. The blessings box. All right, so we went center. We went right last time. So I say we're going to go two and four this time. Two. Two. Oh, look at there. We got some scraps. Four. All right. We got a little bit of extra money. That's going to help us bless out, bless more customers with extra things we can do to their vehicle. Because just welding and painting, you know, some, sometimes the welding costs like two grand. But I haven't really seen it get more expensive than that. Uh, but paint, every time you paint that car is a thousand dollars. So primer and paint is two grand right there so that's going to cover paint on somebody's vehicle that way it don't come out of our shop funds but we ain't even worried about that because once we get this once we get this drag car built uh and we got plenty of selection of seats to go from because we had problems with the uh camaro but hey let's let's go ahead and go over here to our uh i'm gonna go ahead and uh hit the computer up and we're going to access, we're going to go ahead and put these, come on now, we'll go ahead and put these uh, items up for sale, like this new hood that we never did use, we're going to, $208, we sold it, probably, you know, eBay or Marketplace, we can get rid of stuff fairly quickly, uh, we do need to deal with these rims and tires, but I'm not, I can do that off camera. We're just going to stick with the drag car, but we're going to go ahead and sell these, uh, unique vehicle parts. Cause I mean, we, we can get the money for it. So we're going to keep all these main engine components. So those are important to keep cause we can use those on other vehicles. Uh, since those doors and stuff were OE parts and they are painted, somebody else may want them for their vehicle to match the factory color and not a custom paint. Uh, and that's it. We only had a few things besides those rims and we'll mess with that later. So let's get over here. We're going to hit up uh, a rally's performance section and go to our transmission and we're going to get a Pro-Light Pro Chromoly fly Flywheel, 
a uh, TCI racing uh, pressure plate and TCI we're probably gonna need a triple plated clutch it ain't gonna show this in here because this engine is going to produce over a thousand horsepower so it's definitely going to be a triple plated clutch same thing guys you put your flywheel on you would take your alignment tool and stick it uh, after you line your clutch plate up you would stick your alignment tool in there and it would hang this clutch disc in the exact place where it needs to be and then you would put your pressure plate up there and do a uh, this one's gonna take a three times torque technique uh, you know it's like whatever manufacturer spec for the clutch says is what you're gonna go but you're gonna actually torque these bolts down three different times so the game is not going to simulate that. And I think we already got a clutch release. Lord. Alright, we got to go hit our rallies. I should have got that uh, while we were getting parts from them. Um, that's going to be in the regular parts menu. Go to the transmission. Clutch release bearing. We'll order that. Uh, let's. We're, we're just going to hit them up with a lot of stuff. Let's go ahead and get our exhaust ordered. Um, we're gonna need that, we're gonna need that, we're gonna need actually two of each of these. We're gonna go with the stainless steel TIG welded exhaust that we are going to build ourselves. Uh, let's see, need that, need that, and let's get to the back. And we're gonna need these Flowmaster one chambers. Alright, so. Let's go ahead and get all the material that we need for it. Uh, Alright, go back to all parts. We know we need two of them. Oh, wait a minute. We almost messed up. We need the stainless steel, not the... We need the good stuff. Alright, so we're going to need that too. Performance cats, need two of them. Metal muffler, two of them. Exhaust two and the Flowmaster one chambers. We're gonna need two because we want to be able to hear this car. This thing's gonna be a window shaker, especially with the with the cam that we got in it. So we'll put it on. Go ahead and put the other one. And these are the TIG welded uh, three inch exhaust with the flange style connectors where it's just got the band clamp on it you don't have to mess with all these bolts and stuff you just undo the band clamp and put it on let's get down here to the middle muffler all this stuff is going to be lightweight enough you should be able to hold it up with your hands and put the clamp on it it's always good to have a extra person in the shop with you i will always say that just in case you know something happens let's get back here to the mufflers now there's going to be hangers along the way that you're going to have that they're not showing it on this game but there is going to be about a hanger here a hanger there and a hanger on the muffler and a hanger right about here where your axle is so it's going to have about one two three four hangers on each of these exhausts that are going to have these little rubber boots that connect to these uh like metal rods that come off of here with a hook and there'll be one attached to the body of the car too that you just you you just slide that little rubber piece into there and it holds the exhaust up and it also allows the exhaust to move and flex around because that engine is going to be flexing whenever it's trying to torque up you know over a thousand horsepower so you got to have some movement in the exhaust and that's you know that's even in real life so all right so let's go ahead and order our TCI racing transmission from the uh, custom gearbox shop. Uh, I, I wanted, this is going to be the V8. Just should just say V8 on there. It ain't going to be OHV or anything like that. Yeah, not this one, not that one. It's just a regular V8 transmit right here. This is it. And this is very similar to the Nissan transmission uh, that comes out of a uh, 
uh, what is it a g37 they they use this transmission in a lot of high horsepower applications so there's going to be an adapter plate in real life for this transmission so we can get it on there and it normally comes with the clutch so uh, let's go ahead and get it on why is it not letting me put oh yeah yeah we got to put a throw out bearing on that we got in from our rallies now it's going to let us put the transmission now remember if those clutch discs are not lined up this transmission is not going to go in and it's also going to have some dowel pins that help align it too so let's go ahead and get it up here get our bolts in these normally you just torque them down one time with the uh manufacturer's spec i think we already got us all right we're going to literally have to order everything for this car so let's uh get the uh starter order this is they don't have a performance starter in the game so and that's right i wish it would quit kicking me out of the menu you got to go to your electronic shop to get the starters which I don't understand that that's normally in the regular parts menu so while that's on the way we are going to go ahead and put our subframe up underneath here because we are putting a lot of weight on the motor mounts they're holding up a transmission and all types of stuff so let's get this subframe on there which <sighs> We don't have. I, I could have swore that we had this. So, boy, O'Reilly's is fisting to get aggravated with us. Let's go ahead and get it on. Oh yeah, wrong menu. O'Reilly's menu. All right. Let's get the subframe. Go ahead and order it and the starter and all that should be coming in. We may have suspension components, but it's not gonna let us put it on there until. We get the rest of the stuff. Let me see. I think I rebuilt the rear end for this car. Let's see. Yeah, I was able to rebuild the rear end. So we can, we can get that on there. Uh, drive shaft should have been able to be rebuilt. Uh, this is a uh, insane shaft. This is not your average drive shaft. Because the average one, we would probably twist it and break it. With the amount of power that we're going to be putting down with slicks. I think I got an extra fuel tank. Nope, got to order that. I'll put that on the menu. Our rallies just better have their trucks ready today. Uh, I think we got the sway bar. Nope, we're going to need a sway bar. Let's see if we got... We'll go ahead and put our bushings in to hold all this into place. And get the... Uh, the basically the transmission jack because there's in order to get something this heavy up in the air there's a jack that holds it up while you get everything lined up and it's good to get that drive shaft bolted in because it will help everything else you know line up to where it needs to go too so there we go and these you know they bolt in from the bottom but um let's see we got the that's right we didn't have the sway bar so let's see if we was that yep we was able to rebuild the knuckle housing and we'll get our control arms in that's going to hold this into place and our bushings there's bushings and all of this stuff these are the rear ends that i hate rebuilding i like the ones on the uh on the new cars uh are the old cars they're a lot more simple to build they don't take as long they don't take five million bushings to put into there here's another control arm all right so a lot of the stuff we was able to salvage for this car and of course we always put new bushings and these are going to be polyurethane bushings these are not going to be regular bushings regular bushings are going to get broke with this amount of power so anytime you're building a good street car, uh, you, you want to go ahead and get the polyurethane bushings and, uh, you know, like the polyurethane mounts right here for your sway bar and all that other stuff. Let's see if we got the, all right, so I'm going to need that and I wasn't able to rebuild the shock, so we're going to need two of them. So let's get over here. We got a lot of stuff to order for Mo Rallies. 
And we're going to keep an eye on our money too. So, uh, let's see. Cat, we got that. Rear muffler starter, we got it. Alright, so we're going to need a fuel tank. Uh, we're going to need the sway bar. These are pretty big items, so they're going to probably have to bring them in the truck. Wheel hub covers. We're gonna, and that's also brake disc uh, guards and covers. Uh, uh, shock absorbers. Uh, we are going to need two of them. So, O'Reilly's is, is getting paid today, son. They are making some money. Uh, let me make sure. Alright, so we got that. I think we got the components to rebuild the other side, too. I know we got the spindle right here, which they call it a knuckle housing, but anyways, control arm, go ahead and put it in, that way this thing's just not floating in the air by zip ties. That's normally another thing I do if I pull my brake calipers off so I don't have to disconnect the brake lines and you don't have to worry about them falling. Please guys, if you are doing the brakes on your car, do not let your brake calipers hang by the hose. That's a good way to tear up the hose and get a leak and so when you spring a leak on a brake hose you are going to lose fluid very fast and once you lose that fluid you have lost 100% of your braking capability besides the emergency brake cable. Uh, and you better hope that's working and somebody adjusted it right or you've adjusted it right because if it fails you're literally going to have to use the uh, engine to slow down and it's if you got a stick shift you, you can do it but it's more than likely going to torch your clutch trying to slow down a heavy vehicle but hey you got to get the car to stop so get the suspension arm on here uh, spring oh, come on spring cap Got it. Was able to rebuild it. Okay, so we're going to need two springs and spring cap. See, there are so many components on this thing. We're going to need two of the uh, sway bar end links. So, some more stuff from O'Reilly's. Uh, let's see, shock absorber. I've already got. Boy, I'm telling you, I keep hitting the. Uh, Rear springs, we're going to need two of them. Let, let's go into the suspension section after we clear all this mess out of here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know what shock absorbers it's going to need for up front, so we'll wait there. We're looking for the sway bar in links. Let's see where they're at. We know that we're going to need... Yeah, there they are, right there. Uh... We'll get two of them. I think we were out of the suspension arms here, so we're going to get two of those. Uh, the uppers, we're going to get two of them. I know it needed A, too. If we don't need these parts, we will have them for, for extra. Uh, the upper, get two of them. I think I already ordered that by accident, but whatever. I mean, we can use it. So, uh, see, a lot of these parts you're going to be using. Pretty much everything in this section, you want to have about eight of it, and everything in suspension because it can be used on multiple different cars. So, once we start building up our our parts and stuff this you want to start keeping all this stuff in stock that way you're not blowing down O'Reilly's every three minutes in the day trying to get parts and it's a lot quicker to assemble these cars so all right there's our got that in hey, they just walking over the parts as we just sitting here throwing them on the floor with a very lovely attitude no, I'm just playing <laughs> Alright, so we did. We was able to save the wheel hub. Now, remember, we ordered a bunch of these wheel hub bearings, so we got them in stock, and uh, I don't think we got a... Oh, yeah, here's our sway bar in link. We'll go ahead, before we start putting drive line and all that other stuff in here, uh, we got a shock absorber cap. No, we're going to need some of them. So... Keep them coming, our rallies. <laughs> we'll get four of them because we'll need them later. Uh, let's see what else we can assemble while we're waiting on parts. Alright, 
so we know we're going to need a bushing here. That allows us to put our lower control arm, which has got the spring uh, cap. I thought we had two of them. All right, back to the computer again. Uh, get like four of them. Anyway, the next car we build, we ain't gonna have this problem. And a lot of these, like I said, a lot of this stuff, I try to salvage off of other vehicles, so there we go. All right, here we go. We got some more parts coming through the door. All right, got that there. Let's put the shock absorber on. It's gonna hold everything in place. Got the wheel hub. We know we got this piece of the hub, and we got to put the bearing in, which requires a special tool. Let me see if I can get in here to get... Oh, there we go. It's hard getting this camera into places where I can show y'all what I'm doing. I think we was able to rebuild. Yep, yeah, we was able to rebuild the axles in the back. So and we're going to be getting some special brakes for this car, because like I said takes a lot of power to slow down a thousand horses so and we're gonna we're gonna be well over a thousand horsepower so make sure we got all the bushings in it everything's there let's uh let's go ahead and get our fuel tank in they drug it in and we are going to all right nope we're gonna we're definitely gonna need a high volume fuel pump so let's hit the O'Reilly's uh performance menu Back up and quit clearing my parts list. Uh, let's see, fuel pump. Let me just type it in because this is going to take forever. Walk back and forth. All right, fuel pump. They're the black ones. Now, I know a regular one, if it is black, that means it is completely destroyed. But the racing ones are already, they're like a shiny black. They're not like a, a dull black. Let's see, we're going to get back here on this fuel tank and drop that fuel pump in. Alright, now back here there's normally going to be like a locking ring that goes around this with a rubber seal. And you'll have two either metal, which if i done this, I would put the A-in uh, fitting lines on there. Um, I wouldn't have them little plastic ones because this fuel pump is going to be delivering a lot of pressure. And those plastic lines do not normally hold up to, you know, a 350 liter per hour uh, 350 liter per hour uh, volume. They can rupture the lines and if you rupture a fuel line in between here and the motor and it sprays on this exhaust, your, your car is burning to the ground. That's, that's all I can say. It's, it's going to happen. So we still got to pick out wheels and we're going to also order our brakes. So performance brakes, clear the list. Uh, we're going to go with, we're going to actually go with some carbon ceramic brakes. We're going to get all four of those. Uh, like I said, this car is going to be well over a thousand horsepower. So um, we got that coming. Uh, let me back out. I don't even know if we have calipers, but we're going to go ahead and order four calipers. And we're going to go out here and ceramic coat them red. I keep hearing something. I don't know what it is. Hold on just a second. Tigger, get off the window. Go. Get down. Get down. Y'all are up here acting up. Go. Get off the window. Well, these cats, boy, I'm telling you, always doing something out here, tearing up everything. But, anyways, um... We got a cat that is persistent on getting inside. I don't know what is going on. 
But, uh, anyway, oh yeah, yeah, that's right, the whole thing I was gonna, see, I get distracted with the dumb stuff, and then I forget what's going on. So, uh, we're gonna get to our brake pad, yeah, we did not have very many calipers, so, we're gonna go with that chrome red, and we want something that's gonna be bright, bright red. And this is gonna be a ceramic coated paint, so it's gonna disperse heat, uh, pretty well. Which you don't want your brakes getting hot at all. So the hotter the brakes are, the the more they slip. And we don't want slipping brakes in a thousand horsepower car. So alright. I think we got all four, but we're just gonna go ahead and do do them anyways. I don't know how many I've done. Reason why I can't stand being distracted while I'm in the middle of doing stuff. So, alright. So, I think we got our brakes uh, coated with. I think we got all four of them done. So, we should be ready to assemble these new rotors that they dropped off and uh, get, get the brake kit going on. Alright. We're not going to put the regular uh, brake disc. We're going to put these carbon ceramic slotted and are drilled. This is like the best stopping power. Oh my god. Now I know we ordered like a whole kit of brakes for this thing. Let's go ahead. We're going to pick up another box of 20. See how fast we done went through them brakes, guys? So we'll, we'll, we'll work on the front suspension now while we're waiting on more parts to get in. Alright, we got that. Let's go ahead and put in the rack and pinion. Attach it to the subframe. We can pick all this up at one time and we'll attach our our uh, power steering lines and let's get the bushings in. Remember, you want polyurethane bushings here too. Because this car is going to be put underneath an extreme amount of abuse. We did not build this car to, uh, you know daily drive this is going to be a drag strip car only this is going to be a weekend track destroyer this is going to make money back for our shop this is the reason why we're building this car and plus we've been waiting to see you know some some drag racing performance all right so we're going to need a front sway bar uh i think we got some tie rod in links so, nope we're going to need that too and probably the uh the uh tie rod in so go into the suspension i'm just gonna look this stuff straight up because our right, inner tie rods we're just gonna we're gonna just start ordering bolt parts because we're wearing out our rallies left and right we actually have the money to buy this stuff uh front sway bar keep about four of them in uh, there is a bunch of cross members, so we're not going to really order a bunch of them. Uh, the shock absorbers and front springs, uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, order those too. Get about, uh, four of each. Uh, I've never really did use anything with air shocks on it. It's always been these other ones. Now, remember, you got four of everything, so we're going to go ahead and get... Uh, about 30 of the springs and 30 of the caps because you got to build these before you can even put them on the car now we're going to need the uh, sway bar in links for the front not the rear so there's only going to be an A and a B so we'll get uh, I meant to do 10 but we'll just do 9 that way it's an equal amount uh, we'll go ahead and get 4 of these for them uh, I think we're still good on bushings for right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and... Well, you're, you're always going to have to replace these springs in the back. They are constantly getting destroyed on customer vehicles. Oh, yeah. These control arms. Get about 10 of each of those. O'Reilly's just like, dear God, what is going on down there at Driven by Christ Auto? Are they, mess are they really ordering all this stuff? Get about uh, four of each. Actually, we're going to kick it up to eight. Do another four. 
and we'll do another eight this this is gonna help us out a whole lot with uh we'll get about 10 of these with not having to worry about hitting them up all the time i think we ordered the sway bar in links already uh we, we should be good to fully assemble unless the front steering knuckle needs to be done so we're gonna go ahead and get about eight of each of these that way we're not having to worry about all this stuff i know that other one is for a diesel truck we are not going to need this one um maybe an f series we'll we'll get four of them because i've never really encountered too many of them all right so we got a huge shipment of suspension parts coming in so let's see what we can do i think we've already rebuilt this front steering knuckle uh, yep, we did have some already there. Uh, a lot of this stuff. So this is going to be a shock absorber A, which is what we're going to have to build. And you need this machine. Guys, do not ever try to take a loaded strut assembly or shock absorber apart without this machine. Because these springs have enough force they can kill you whenever they come apart with them pieces hitting you. So we're always use one of these machine or they got a special tool that actually attaches to it and compresses the spring, but I do not trust them. I've seen them actually slip off of there and they'll send the tool and the spring flying in your face. So don't trust them. Get the real spring compressor. You can order them offline. They're, you know, about fifty dollars but hey fifty dollars is worth digging a spring out of your face so very important to have i think we ordered these control arms too oh we know we just rebuilt these so we're going to tag this control arm before they get these other parts over here get to the computer real quick and uh we're going to order, we're, you're going to go through a lot of these because these have ball joints in the bottom. So we'll get about 20 of these. And like I said, you got to put your bushings in on them. Uh, they are separate and these are going to be polyurethane bushings. Let's get the sway bar in. Alright, right there, there we go. Go ahead and slide it through the front, underneath the engine. Put our inner tie rod in. Uh, zoom let's zoom out all right uh, the outer tie rod we got plenty of them uh, we got oh, Lord. and whenever I didn't think I ordered enough parts already so we're going to need a, a front wheel hub let's go ahead and get about 20 of them too because that's normally something that gets broken on customer vehicles i know we're spending a lot of money in parts you're like oh my god we just went from 330,000. now we're down to this it's okay you don't want to spend all your money in parts but the stuff that you use a lot go ahead and buy it because we're supposed to make all this money back i can guarantee you once we get this car down there at the track this, this car is going to be unbeatable unless they're cheating down there which sometimes guys they do cheat at drag strips it's just part of the game uh and in real life too especially when their hometown buddies come there to race and they want to make sure their buddy wins at the racetrack that's the reason why uh, i actually quit drag racing and uh went to another form of uh, racing which can be frowned upon but you know um, whenever you're being cheated at the racetrack and then they shut down the racetrack for dumb reasons they're only open uh, in real life only half a year and race season is normally really good whenever the uh, the track is closing down I mean you got cold air outside but yes it is harder for tires to uh, to hook up whenever the the uh track is cold uh but it's different whenever you're talking about the street um it, it's a completely different pavement uh they got special uh spray that they can uh spray on the tires whenever they do a burnout that guarantees that that tire is going to hook to that street pavement so um yeah y'all can pretty much put two and two together uh, I don't really promote it, but 
there's a lot of people out there that do it. I mean, they got YouTube channels of it. So the way I look at it, it you know, you pay your taxes. You're, you're paying for that street to get repaired. And if you're out there playing and there's nobody around and you, you are not risking the safety of other people in their vehicle and you're off on a secluded road and, hey, have your fun. Uh, I, I know if, if I work for the police department and I knew some kids were out there racing, you know, hey, race at your own risk. Whatever happens is on you, but just don't be doing it going down the highway where there's a bunch of people that could have their kids and stuff in the car. You know, you lose control of a, of a thousand horsepower vehicle and slam into a family full of kids. Uh, guys, it's not good at all. So keep it controlled keep it in an area where there is not nobody where you ever have to worry about running into each other now if y'all two are out there racing and you can't keep control of your car that's just part of racing y'all run into each other get ready to pay the consequences not only is your car going to get tore up and you better hope you can get towed before anybody gets out there to report it but you're you're just going to have to pay to get your vehicle repaired because don't think full coverage insurance is going to cover street racing it doesn't so uh, that's all coming out of your pocket. That's a sacrifice that you have to make in the same way at a drag strip. If you're racing your car at a drag strip and you, you're you doing perfectly fine, but the car next to you is getting all stupid down the track and they lose control and run into your car and destroy it, that, that's just a loss that you're fixing to take. So in racing, there is losses. So it, it comes with a price. So safety... And controlling your car is the utmost top responsibility if you're going to be racing. So you you don't ever you don't ever want to hurt nobody whenever you're all out there just trying to have fun. So all right, the factory tire size was a 245-40-20. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump up to a. Uh, we're going to need a 355 in the back with the amount of power that we're going to need. And we're going to put a 255 up front. We're going to drop it down to a 35, uh, 20. So let's go ahead and go get our rims and tires from Wheel World. Uh, let's see. Um, we were going to run the black and polished aluminum five stars. All right, we're going to need four of them. We're going to run the factory spec, which is a 20-inch wheel. All right, let's go ahead and pick up some tires from them. And we are going to be running the Dominator Street Slicks. Uh, there is no difference between slick tire uh you know b c and a you know whatever it is a b and c like whole shot dominator or the regular they're they're all the same uh they they just got different names on them just different name brands i like dominator so we're gonna get four of them they are 20 inch rim size we are going to get three i think i said 355s we're going to go with a 355 in the back at a 35 profile. So, oh, wait a minute. They were 20-inch rims. That's right. Uh, we got to redo it all again. 355s. You're going to need it. And we're going to go with 35s. We may, drop, we may drop it down to a 30. We'll go with a 30. And we'll use a 255 35 20 on the front. I know the tires pretty well, so we're going to go ahead and do that. 20 inch rim, two. We're going to go with 255s up front. That gives us good steering power, and we're going to go up to a 35. Because once you start getting the width really, really wide, it automatically brings up the profile of the tire. So you've got to lower that to make your tires match. I already know this because I was like, what in the world is going on with my tires? Why are they not matching? But guys, it looks like we have a fully assembled vehicle. We got transmission. We got driveline in. All we got to do. Oh, wait a minute. We got to get finished uh, putting our racing brakes back in here on the back. And we'll get some fluid in the... Uh, oh, I thought we had rebuilt the axles. All right, so we're going to have to get an axle, too. So a little bit more stuff, but that's cool. It's part of building a race car. 
Uh, let's go ahead and go order that. Uh, it's going to be from the O'Reilly part menus. And remember, guys, we are using insane shafts. These are actual real shafts that you can buy in real life. If you are uh, building a really high horsepower car and you keep breaking drive axles, which front wheel drives are known for, Hondas are known to break in drive axles whenever they're running uh, street slicks, uh, go with insane shafts. You're not about to break. The next weakest point is going to be slipping the clutch or you're fixing to bust the transmission box. So, I would rather have the weak point in the clutch. Just, you know, if you're making so much power, you're slipping a, a 800 horsepower clutch disc on a front wheel drive car, but at least you're not breaking the transmission. Okay, that's good. Transmissions are a lot more expensive than clutches. So, make sure we're going to go ahead and get the brakes over here. We're going to leave the bleeder valves open. And what you would do is get you some of them little wash buckets from Walmart. And you would, uh, you would put them right here on the floor below the uh, uh, brake calipers and open up the uh, bleeder valves on all the calipers. Put you a bucket down there. Uh, you know, do it on all four of them. And what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to gravity bleed the brakes where you fill the uh, reservoir up and you put a funnel into it. That way it can actually, it ain't going to show this on the game, but uh, we actually don't even have a brake booster in this car. But it's what they call the brake master cylinder and uh, booster. The It's vacuum controlled, so it assists with helping with braking power. Um, we're going to, these are universal in all cars, so... Uh, get about 10 of them because they are kind of pricey. Oh, yeah, that's another thing we need to get. We're going to have to go in the electronic section. You're going to need about 10 of these, too, the ABS modules and ABS pumps. You want to have ABS on a car because if you got a skidding tire, you are not stopping. You are just sliding. So very important to have, especially in a high horsepower car that, you know, you could be doing... 160 200 miles per hour and you need that tire to stop and not skid so let's go ahead and uh wait a minute yeah let's go ahead and put the brake fluid into here that way our brakes can be gravity bleeding while we're doing the rest of the stuff and you want to keep an eye on this level it's going to leak really slow it's not going to do it fast Hey, oh, we kind of overfilled it a little bit, but that's okay. We'll throw some some sh uh, shop diapers on the floor, which is like these absorbent pads. So as it's dripping down, we'll clean off the, the engine bay with some brake cleaner and get all that oil off of there. We'll go ahead and put our other coolant reservoirs in. Uh, all right, so we're going to go ahead and mark all this stuff too. Uh, air box. I think we got a radiator. No, we don't. So... I said we're going to be a fuse box. There's a lot of stuff that we're fixing to be ordering because we do not want to have to go through this. Go, go ahead and put the ABS pump in. That way, uh, as the fluid is going through the system, it can go ahead and go through your ABS box. It's still going to need to be bled, but it will decrease your bleed time without having to sit there and pump this thing for like... 20 minutes trying to get it to work we're gonna go ahead and grab about four batteries on standby that way uh all right now there's two different fuse boxes go ahead and get about 10 of each get the covers for them because this is the only fuse boxes that are going to be in the vehicles that way you got new parts i mean we're, we're we done knocked ourselves down you know about fifty thousand dollars but uh, it's going to be, it's going to be good enough. Um, let's see. Uh, fuses and relays. I think we've already ordered them, but whatever. Let's go ahead and grab about 20 of each of these. Because you're going to be going through these like crazy. Uh, let's see. Relays. Here they are. Now, these relays can be expensive, but... We're going to go ahead and get 20 of each. 
Like I said, this is stuff that we do not want to have to be hitting up the parts store for. Or making Jamie walk over there to O'Reilly's because we don't have a... Uh, we're going to grab about five starters. Same thing for the V8s. Go ahead and get them. Spark plugs, we don't run those. We run the good premium plugs in all of our vehicles. I do not like using doo-doo spark plugs. So, uh, I think that's about the gist of it. Most of the time, you can rebuild these alternators. And we're going to get a lot of this stuff whenever we go to those barnyards. We are going to get a ton of parts that we can rebuild and keep in our inventory. Oh, yeah, hold on. I don't think we got the... Uh, coolant reservoirs and all that other stuff uh, oh yeah wrong o'reilly part menu all right coolant reservoir get about 10 of them there may be different coolant reservoirs there's only one type of power steering fluid reservoir so snag about 20 of those uh keep them in your back air filter base get about 10 of them uh we're going to actually, oh, come on, quit kicking me out of the menu. Alright, air. We're just going to put in air. And, of course, because it's got the the uh, the marks on there, it ain't going to do it. So, anyways, here's our air filter bases. We've done already got 10 of them. We'll get 10 of those, 10 of those, and make sure you get the covers with them. Got to have the covers. These are your these are your main ones. Uh, I don't really know what this one goes on, but we're going to go ahead and grab it. That way we got all this stuff in stock. Because this is a lot of things that the customer vehicles will need to. So. And some of these are a little bit expensive because they got mass airflow sensors into them. Okay, so this computer reads air volume that is going into the engine with that sensor. This allows for correct air and fuel ratio. It works and coincide with your uh, O2 sensors, which I am surprised they do not have O2 sensors on this game. That's that's like a really extremely important part of the uh, of the vehicle. I mean, you you gotta have O2 sensors for the computer to read what's your air to fuel mixture. So I like running those wide bands, uh, but most computers they have to have a certain one for it. But uh, AME makes a good wide band uh, O2 sensor. So, uh, we got the battery in there now. Uh, actually, let's remove this battery until we get all of our wiring run. So, uh, put that in. We're going to go over here. Put that in. Now, remember what I was saying. What I tell you, there's going to be relays and stuff everywhere. Uh, you got fuel pump relays, you got electric window relays, headlight relays. You're going to have all types of relays in a real vehicle. And some of them, they look just like this too. Some of them are small, medium, and large. Most of the time, the large ones are like bigger stuff like AC components, stuff with high amperage. So, and these are just your fuses. You know, that could be anything from a cell phone, the cigarette lighter inside, uh the gauge lights or any lighting in the car so something that don't really pull a lot of electricity because everything's going to led technology now so all right so we got the wiring harness in we got everything hooked up to the motor uh with the last piece of wiring harness that we that we're going to hook up to is going to be at our ecm so uh, we are going to, uh, we're going to order a performance ECU. And now, he here's another thing, guys. Whenever you go to your O'Reilly's performance tune-up shop menu, you're going to try to click on this ECU, and it's not going to bring it up by clicking it. They do need to fix this. Uh, Car Mechanic Simulator does need to fix this. Uh, it will not pull it up. So what you got to do is pull up your PlayStation type menu and just type in ECU. 
and then it'll bring them all up and we know that we got a type a not a type b so uh, we're going to get the $10,000. That is a fully programmable ECU. It's got the most amount of channels for monitoring. It gives you the most platform. This is like a Haltech. Uh, I forgot what the best series of the Haltech is, but uh, it can read up to it can read up to 12 cylinders and have all the channels that it needs for sensors, knock sensors all types of stuff and I'm pretty sure I'm that's the first time I ever mentioned a knock sensor all right so what a knock sensor does it's a little microphone that attaches to the motor and it can pick up on pre detonation uh, like if your uh, air to fuel mixture is too lean you'll actually start uh, igniting the cylinder before it, it's good in timing or TDC and what it creates is knock we are going to be running a racing air filter in this car. We got to. So back to the performance menu. Go to the air filters. And uh, we do use a lot of these. So we'll do that. We're going to actually just type in air. And uh, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, we're not going to order all these, so that, that is a lot of filters, but we, we only use premium air filters if they do want to get their air filter serviced here. That is one of the services by Driven by Christ Auto. We do not use regular air filters. They are a waste of money. These are like the K&N. Oh, God. We, we know we're going to need a bag of clips. on. Let's go back to here. We're going to need these clips for sure. All right, so let's get all of them. We are almost there. We're going to get like 40 of these things because you're going to use them on on the drag cars. They're used on the distributors, which is the famous clip that always comes up missing. And, of course, there's normally a bushing that everybody forgets. But, uh, anyways, um, I wish they had performance radiators on here because we would not be running a... A aluminum plastic radiator we would be running and all uh, I know we put that radiator on here uh, we would be running an all uh, TIG welded aluminum radiator uh, probably like a two inch core so it's got more area to cool cooling in especially on a thousand horsepower plus drag car uh, we do not have this hand fan. See, these are all the parts that you're going to have to, uh, you know, get bulk on. So, um, we'll do fan. Wait, we can get the fan. All right, see these radiator fan housings? Get about five of each of them. Uh, that was four. We need, oh, well, now we got six. So, we'll go with five. Get all of these. You want all these fans that you can get. Uh, these these are going to be on your classic and certain engines, so we'll, we'll wait, but these are your universal ones, so go ahead and order all of them, that way you're not having to waste time on running back and forth from the parts menu. Alright, so we got that in, let's go ahead and put our win- Alright, so that's another thing that we need in stock. We're going to go ahead and take care of all this part ordering and getting it out of the way. That way, whenever we need stuff, it's already there. I like O'Reilly's, but O'Reilly's does not like me this much. Like, somebody would have done hung the phone up or, or unplugged the cord going to the wheel call printer. So, alright, so we got that. We got the battery. Uh, we're going to have to go through fluids. We, we're going to do that before we even put the tires on. So, I don't know if we actually put oil in this motor, but we're going to check it. No, this engine is bone stock. So what we're going to do is we're going to be running, uh, they got this really good oil. Uh, it's made by Amsoil and you run some Hyperlube in there. It's good for superchargers. The supercharger is also going to need oil too. Alright, five. Alright, there we go. So I'm pretty sure that we got this really close to the top of the stick. Uh, it's okay as long as it's in the operating level we're good 
but uh, I'm not really sure on the damage system, but these superchargers, it's not going to show it on the game. There's normally a little plug like right here where it simulates. You take that plug out and then there'll be one down here. You pull that one to drain it. You put the plug back in. You take this plug out and you fill it up. Whenever it overflows out of the supercharger, you put the plug back in and that's it. They, they take they don't take a whole lot of oil but anyways let's go ahead and get our cooling in oh man so it's almost at the end of the day guys we only got five more minutes but we are literally seconds away from getting our drag car cranked up and I am just kind of bummed that we didn't get a chance to get it done we still got some paint we still got some tuning to go so we're going to go ahead and get fluids that way tomorrow after we get done with a customer vehicle uh we can we can go ahead and get our car out there we'll be ready for the drag strip so i think that is all the fluids because we were already gravity bleeding the brakes uh coolant oil power steering uh oh yeah windshield wash just you know just in case uh somebody blows a, a oil line at the drag strip and starts blowing oil everywhere you want to be able to see where you're going you never know what will happen at a drag strip so it's, keep it topped off definitely want good wiper blades and the blades that i like using are the rain x hybrid blades that have the air dams on the front of them that it's like a a spoiler on the wiper blade it actually uses the wind to push the wiper blade up against the windshield and you get a better wipe or a better swipe it pulls more water off of the windshield but guys let's uh in these last couple of minutes we're gonna throw these tires on here and see what they look like now remember oh man we never did even put the tires on the rims we got we only got four minutes left guys we ain't gonna be able to get all this done today but that is all right we we're, we're the i'm telling you the next time we deal with this car it's going to be bare minimum stuff that we will have to do and we will have this car getting ready to take its first test run down the drag strip now it we are going to have to tune the transmission we are going to have to tune the ecm uh so there's going to be some tuning so we're not quite ready to go hit the drag strip and start racing for money and uh placing in our bets so we're, we're not very far away guys we are almost there but i am tired i am done for the day so uh we're gonna go ahead and start shutting everything down and, and we're calling it guys uh wheel world is then dropped uh wheel world is then dropped off our uh and they they actually are gonna you we're gonna go ahead and use the new company name instead of wheel world uh uh their tire tire shop central and rim shop central they did change their name uh they they did separate something happened with wheel world uh i think it was like something legal dispute about something so it's tire shop central and rim uh rim shop central so still have every wheel they still got all their inventory just a new name so uh you know we'll we'll update update that in our next video but anyways it's been great guys thanks for the prayers my wife is at home safe in the bed even though she may not be feeling that good but prayers and numbers makes a difference it makes so much of a difference so build up your prayer group guys even little kids if y'all want to pray with each other y'all need some stuff to happen i'm guarantee you if everybody believes in your circle 100 percent and they're being truthful you're gonna have your prayers answered so but anyways guys i'm done uh today and i will catch up with y'all uh tomorrow so y'all have a blessed night and a blessed tomorrow and i'll catch y'all then this is going to be it for episode 10, so I'll catch you on episode 11. Later, guys.